MySQL offers dozens of functions capable of manipulating string values. One of the most fundamental functions is length, which you can use to determine how many characters are found in a particular string. So for instance, suppose we wanted to know the length of each film title in the Sakila database. So it's a pretty rudimentary task. However, it I think serves to just give you a fundamental idea of how to integrate a function into a query. So select length title, then we'll also retrieve the title as well. So we know what the length value pertains to from film. And I'll go ahead and execute that query. And you can see we have the length and the associated title. So pretty straightforward, but nonetheless, I think this serves as a ideal first function for you to begin thinking about. Moving right along, you can also perform other rather useful tasks, for instance, such as concatenating two fields together. So if I head over to the actor table, you'll see that the first name and last name of each actor are found in their own column. There arises many occasions in which you are going to want to return that actor's name as one contiguous string. You can use the concat function to perform that task. So I'll go ahead and call the concat function, passing in the first name, last name, and from the actor table, we'll go ahead and execute this query. And you'll see that, sure enough, the actor's first name and last name have been concatenated together into one field. Now, of course, we are missing the space between the actor's first and last name. So what you can do is you can pass in any sequence of string characters. So what we will do is pass in a space encapsulated between a pair of quotations. And I'll go ahead and execute the query again. And sure enough, now we have the name displaying properly. Of course, you're not constrained by any particular ordering of fields. For instance, many occasions arise in which you want the person's name to be displayed as last name, comma, first name. So we can put the last name column first, a comma character. I'll include the space there. And first name, we'll go ahead and execute that query and we have the desired results. So certainly very useful function that can do a lot with minimal effort. Moving right along, there are other interesting ways in which you can retrieve strings from your database. For instance, we can transform strings. If we head over to the customer table, you'll see, for instance, that the customer's first name, last name, and the first part of their email address uses all uppercase characters, which perhaps looks a little bit odd, right? Now, suppose you wanted to return customer email addresses, for instance, in all lower case. You can do that using the lower function. So select lower email from customer. Go ahead and execute that. And sure enough, we are seeing all of the characters in lower case. There is also, incidentally, an upper function, which will convert strings to, not surprisingly, uppercase. Now, sometimes your transformation requirements are a little bit more involved than what can easily be accomplished using a simple standard MySQL function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the CRM database to demonstrate this because, as it happens, the Sakila database doesn't offer a field which is conducive to what I want to demonstrate. So I'm going to head over to the CRM database and specifically to the contacts table. Now, again, of course, the CRM database is much more simplistic than what you're going to see in the Sakila database, but we can continue using it throughout the video to demonstrate certain key elements of MySQL's features and behavior. So as you can see in the contacts table, we have the phone numbers column. Now, as a database developer or administrator, you're going to find many instances in future projects where the data is not stored in the database exactly as you would like it to be. The phone column is a notable example of this. This pattern is perfectly fine for storing the phone number, but chances are when you retrieve that phone number and insert it into a form field or maybe dump it to a PDF, 
you're going to want the phone number to be formatted using the standard formatting, which happens to be typically dashes between the first three characters and between the second three characters and the last four characters. Instead of, for instance, the phone number all stuck together, you're going to want to retrieve it so that it looks like this. Now, it's common for developers to use the programming language to manipulate that string after you've retrieved it from the database. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. However, it's also possible to do this on the database level. As an example, we will use another MySQL function called substring to perform this transformation. So a substring will do pretty much what the function name seems to indicate, and that is it's going to retrieve a substring or a part of a string found in a particular field. So as an example, let's go ahead and use substring to retrieve a part of a phone number. So we've started with the third character. If you recall from viewing the complete list, 614 was the area code for each of these fields. So we've started with the third character and we've retrieved the substring. Now, this is a useful first example to demonstrate substring's behavior. However, we're going to need to do something a little bit different in order to accomplish what we desire to do, which is insert the hyphen within the appropriate locations. The first step to doing that is to retrieve the first three and only the first three characters, the second three, and finally the remaining four characters. So in order to do that, we're going to supply a somewhat different set of parameters to substring. In order to retrieve the first three and only the first three characters, you're going to supply a negative number to substring, which effectively causes it to run backwards. So select substring from the phone field, step back 10 characters. We only want to retrieve the first three characters. So I'll go ahead and execute this revised function. And we now have the area code. So good, we're moving right along. If you want to retrieve the second set of three characters, you're only going to go back seven characters. And I'll go ahead and execute that. And as it happens, all four of the phone numbers in our table have 999 as the second set of three characters. Finally, to retrieve the last four characters, we're going to go back four, and we want four. So I'll execute that, and sure enough, we have the last set of four characters. So we've accomplished the first part of this task, right? And that is figuring out how to retrieve the first set, the second set, and the third set of characters. Now, the second step, which is to insert the hyphens within the appropriate location, is a little bit more involved. In fact, we need to combine string functions in order to make this happen. And as it happens, we are going to use the concat function to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just start this over. And we're going to concatenate the first set of characters, passing along a hyphen. And I'll go to the next line to make this much more readable. Substring phone, second set of characters. Again, we're going to pass along another hyphen. We'll conclude with the last four. From contacts, I'll go ahead and execute that. And I've managed to introduce an error into this. Obviously, we do not want concat three times. So we'll go ahead and execute the query. And sure enough, we've concatenated the first set of three, the second set of three, and the concluding set of four, inserting hyphens within the appropriate location, and we have the correct phone number. Of course, we're not limited to hyphens. We could, for instance, use another familiar formatting, which is to place parentheses around the area code. And I'll go ahead and execute this revised query. There's an alternative format that is equally useful. So in this introduction to MySQL functions, we've reviewed a couple of the more commonly used string functions and concluded with a pretty interesting example which combines functions together to perform even more powerful tasks. So certainly these are very useful functions and I guarantee you'll use them repeatedly in your future projects. However, we've really only covered a few of the dozens of functions available. So be sure to check out the MySQL documentations section on string functions. I think reviewing that list is going to give you an even greater idea of what's possible. So with that, let's move on to functions related to numbers of all types.